Any search for the words Arab civilization will often emphasize how Islam is the key to the Arab people. One such example is this research which is accessible in the link below. It mentions how Arab civilization is a combination of certain values which includes Islamic culture. It then goes on to mention, quote unquote, Arabia was a cradle of Islam and of Arab civilization. Throughout the research, and this is by no means an anomaly as it's found in other research, especially those conducted by Muslims, the main theme is that it connects and collocates the term Arab civilization to the religion of Islam. However, as this and other videos have and will show, great Arab civilizations and or important civilizations within Arabia have existed long before the arrival of Islam. Islam is not the cradle of Arab civilization. In fact, one of the most earliest civilizations located within the Arabian Peninsula and probably one of the most important civilizations within all of human history was Dilmun. Despite the claims made by Muslims for Mecca, the historical and archaeological evidence is scant for its ancient origins. Abraham would have lived around 2000 BC, but unlike being able to trace Mecca's origins nowhere near this far back, Dilmun is mentioned by name in ancient artifacts, for example dated to around 2520 BC on the door socket of Unanshi. It mentions Dilmun as a trading center. The relevant section enlarged from the socket in the cuneiform reads, quote, the ships of Dilmun brought him wood as a tribute from foreign lands, unquote. This is because Dilmun was an important trading center in Arabia and at the height of its power it controlled the Persian Gulf trading routes. Michael Rice, a respected scholar and pioneer, mentions Dilmun in his book The Archaeology of the Arabian Gulf. On page 269, he mentions the importance of the Dilmun civilization. He talks about the Sumerian trade with Dilmun, along with the aforementioned translation of the inscription of the door socket of Unanji. In the Britannica, it mentions how Dilmun was a commercial centre found within Sumerian economic texts going as far back as 3000 BC, transporting copper and a variety of other goods, including precious stones and agricultural products. In this article, it says, quote, Dilmun, one of the most important ancient civilizations of the region and set to date to the third millennium BC, was a hub on a major trading route between Mesopotamia, the world's oldest civilization, and the Indus Valley in South Asia. The full link is below. Testament to their contribution not only to civilization within the Arabian Peninsula, but to human civilization as a whole, a concept everyone still uses today and takes for granted. Over 4,000 years ago, they introduced the concept of a receipt after purchasing goods. Shown here in this clay tablet, it lists clothing along with their prices. It also represents one of the oldest known examples of writing in human history. In the already cited book by Michael Rice, he describes such was the prosperity of Dilmun the ancient Sumerians wrote poetry about it. Dilmun was described as a place of joy, peace, abundance, a holy place where the gods would meet. And on pages 144 to 145, Dilmun is described as the holy land, going on to say the first land in the world to be accorded this sacred character.
Although Islamic sources go on to claim Mecca as being the first holy land and its being a place in which Adam may have set his foot in, more on the comparison between Dilmun and Mecca will be shown in the next video. Although they were pagans, Dilmun was the original holy land and may have inspired the Garden of Eden story and other creation mythologies as explained in this research. On page one, it says, quote, Sumerians who invented writing and the Assyrians who absorbed Sumer's writing, as well as its legend of a luxuriantly lovely land and Eden called Dilmun. On page two is a map of Dilmun. And on page three, it explains in the Sumerian, the term Adam meant settlement on the plain, which is connected to the term Eden, which in Sumerian meant fertile plain, the name given to Dilmun. Dilmun is now being recognised as a source of pride amongst modern Arabs. In this article title, The Lost Paradise of Dilmun by Arab America, it says about Dilmun, which is in current day Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and neighbouring countries, that it was called Eden because, quote, the historical Dilmun was a prosperous place due to the fact that it was a land blessed by the gods. The island was considered an oasis of fertility in ancient times. This could have given rise to a Sumerian legend that Bahrain may have been the biblical garden of Eden. End quote. Despite what has been mentioned about the term Eden and it being referred to a corporeal place on earth called Dilmun, the Quran mentions Eden by name too. However, this is an ethereal place in heaven where good Muslims will be rewarded with after they die for all eternity. The Quran even describes Eden as a fertile place with rivers flowing within it, just like ancient Sumerians did. For example, in Quran 98.8, the term Eden is pronounced as Adan in the Arabic. According to Islamic eschatology and concepts of the hereafter, Adam was expelled from heaven itself to this world as a punishment. Quran chapter 2 verse 36 will be looked at in more detail in the next video. Thus, Eden is not a physical place of this world, rather it is a realm of the hereafter. However, archaeology, ancient legends and history shows Eden is a physical place on earth and that place is Dilmun. In this article by Dr. Samuel Noah Kramer, who was the world's most foremost expert in Sumerian history during his life, in his article with the title, The End of Civilization and Dilmun, the Sumerian Paradise Land. On page 45, he talks about Dilmun being described as a paradise type place where immortality was given after the great flood to Ziasudra, the Sumerian Noah. The Sumerians considered Dilmun to be a blessed, prosperous land dotted with great dwellings to which the countries of the entire civilized world known to the Sumerians brought their goods and it goes on in this popular archaeology website it has an article explaining how like the later story of the garden of eden where the residents were immortal a place with no sickness or death so according to sumerian myths dilmun was described as a paradise where the gods resided with immortality In this academic study called Dilmun, Gateway to Immortality, by a Harvard professor, Dr. Lamberg Karlovsky, who explains the commercial importance and historical significance of Dilmun, including how the place was considered to be a paradise, a place of immortality and spirit world by the ancient Sumerians. Today, the area of Dilmun is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
making it the oldest civilization to be given such a status within the Arabian Peninsula. So in conclusion, Islamic sources and mainstream scholarship tend to collocate the term Arab civilization with the advent of Islam. However, civilizations within the Arabian Peninsula existed long before Islam. For example, Dilmun was probably one of the first and most important civilizations within all of human history. The people of Dilmun were highly successful in trade, prosperous and responsible for the concept of the receipt and early writing along with inspiring stories to do with the creation of the first man, Garden of Eden and Noah's Flood. These are ideas that have stood the test of time and have infiltrated to other cultures and religions including Islam. According to Islamic teachings, Eden is a heavenly place found within the afterlife wherein rivers flow. However, archaeology suggests Eden is a place on earth, that being Dilmun. It was called Eden because of its fertile land, prosperity and a sacred land for the gods that resided there for eternity. Some of the historical evidence for Dilmun, such as its importance as a trading centre, prosperity, sacred land, a sort of heavenly place connected to Adam, later came to be applied to Mecca thousands of years later. In the next video, a comparison will be made between Mecca and Dilmun to see if there is any veracity to the Islamic claims. Thank you.